Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Andy Arnott with Amy Wees. And this is Seller Roundtable number 66, and we are super excited and privileged to have Chris Iyer on today. Thank you so much, Chris, for being on. Thank you. Pleasure to be on. So, uh, Chris, if you if uh, people don't know who you are yet, which I don't know, I, I wouldn't believe it if that, if they said that. But uh, tell people uh, a little bit about yourself, your background, kind of leading up to to where you are today. Leave as little or as much in as you like. If you want to tell us about school, kids, all that stuff, we love to get to know you. So let us let us know. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm Chris Iyer. I'm the head of industry relations and strategic partnerships for. ShipStation, uh, in that role, um, I head some of our um, marketplace and strategic relationships with uh, folks like Alibaba, Mercado Libre, launching today, uh, Etsy, Google, some other ones, um, in addition to um, representing ShipStation on a few corporate boards, such as the International Mailers Advisory Group um, and uh, a couple other ones, including Parcel Shippers Association, uh, where I serve as the vice president this year. So uh, numerous hats uh, in addition to kind of representing us uh, out in the media and, uh, and marketplace itself. Awesome. And I am not the Chris Iyer who is the CEO of Walmart in India, just to clarify. <laughs> Well, that yeah, that's make sure that yeah, make sure that that doesn't get mixed out, mixed up. Even though I think that if you got that job offer, I'm guessing you 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 might respond to that email. Uh, they they could just uh, accidentally award me his stock options, and you know we there, there it is. Yeah, yeah, you can get the letter in the mail. You know, here's your login <laughs> info. <laughs> That'd be perfect. And then you just sell, 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 and then transfer to the Swiss bank accounts, right? Absolutely. Well, um, so if, uh, if you don't mind uh, letting people know, uh, if they listen to this podcast, they know that I've talked about it a, a, a million times, but if people don't know what ShipStation is, can you give us a little background on ShipStation, uh, what it is, what it does, and why it's such a, an, an amazing tool? Sure. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, first off, for the kind words about ShipStation, um, we serve as the tool for merchant e-commerce. So we, we like to say, Wherever you sell, however you ship, exceptionally efficient. Uh, the idea behind it is if you sell and are a brand online, selling either through your own self channels uh, and through marketplaces, then we can be a great fit for you uh, to make you more organized in importing and managing your orders and processing your shipments uh, and getting you to the right carriers, the right options, um, and the right shipping methods that are right for your business. And so. Um, I, I oftentimes say that uh, uh, we are a one-trick pony in some ways, but a, a one-trick pony that does one, one, one heck of a lot. Uh, so we are, our, our trick is making merchants uh, exceptionally efficient, and I feel like that's what we're good at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know, like I said, I've used it for quite a few years now, and uh, one of the things that I, uh, I noticed was um, <laughs> one of the reasons I loved you guys too is you had so many integrations in terms of marketplaces that I was literally able to go in and be like, Oh, I don't sell on that channel. I didn't even hear, I haven't even heard of that channel. Let me go check it out. And then uh, I think wish.com was one of those where I hadn't even heard of it until I saw your, your integration. And I checked it out. I was like, wow, this is interesting. And we actually did some decent business on, on wish. So um, yeah, I, I love the tool. I love how it evolves. I love the automation. Um, you know, it is, like I said, one of my go-tos in terms of, especially if you're doing merchant fulfilled, uh, which through this whole COVID thing, we, you know, we had our own stock, thankfully. So we were able to just scale up and, and, and do that. Um, so to, to us, it's kind of a, an integral tool in, in our business. Um, what kind of, uh, partnerships and integrations do you have with, with, uh, e-commerce retailers? I know you have a ton, but any, any that are new, any new ones that you can talk about that uh, that people might be interested in, or uh, any longtime ones that you feel are essential. Well, I think uh, to your point, we have a lot of marketplace integrations with folks, like you said, like Wish, Rakuten, uh, Sears Marketplace, and of course uh, the major ones that we all know and love. Um, so, really, for brands, to your point, uh, that are looking to expand their sales, a lot of times looking in ShipStation and saying, 
hey, that could be an option for me. It, it's a great way to poke around and explore. And uh, like I mentioned today, uh, we have some exciting partnerships uh, that we're going to be talking about soon with uh, Mercado Libre launching today, largest marketplace in Latin America, and um, Alibaba, uh, where we've had a partnership for um, a little over a year, and some other ones. So I think there's a lot of fun stuff coming uh, for merchants and brands that want to sell online and expand their presence. And I would love to hear a little bit more about how those integrations work. So I know ShipStation is a provider of, um, it's a provider of fulfillment, right? Where you're able to purchase shipping and fulfill to different marketplaces. But how does that actually work for, for example, an Amazon seller who might want to start selling off of the Amazon platform? That's what most people are kind of looking to do right now. They're looking for 3PLs. They're looking for places to store their inventory and be able to then send it either onesie twosies at a time um, to direct to consumer on other marketplaces or in bulk to maybe wholesale order fulfillment or, um, or even to Amazon. Are you guys both a 3PL and fulfillment? Are you one or the other? Kind of fill in the gap a little bit on how that works and maybe some how those integrations might allow us to sell on more platforms. Sure, absolutely. It's a great question. So uh, it's interesting. We, uh, we, we, we found that uh, a lot of fulfillment providers over time used us. Um, we were used to the idea that the merchant uses us, um, obviously, as they scale for growth uh, and get volume they tend to use us. But we found an interesting phenomenon that so many fulfillment providers said, why do we want to build those integrations ourselves? Why don't we use a cost-effective tool like ShipStation? And then the flip side of that was that so many merchants were on ShipStation that they worked with that it ended up being a pretty nice synergy. Um, but to answer your question directly, I mean, a um, couple ideas. Number one, we do have FBA. Uh, fulfillment by Amazon uh, in app that merchants can use. Um, it, it's tried and true. It's certainly there for merchants who sell on Amazon and other marketplaces uh, to be able to leverage. Um, but for a lot of merchants that want to expand their horizons, um, on ShipStation.com um, and on our, our, uh, our partners page, we do uh, have quite a few uh, marketplaces, uh, excuse me, uh, 3PLs that work with the various marketplaces that can help you as a merchant to scale on those marketplaces um, and help you to understand those efficiencies. And the beauty is uh, on our website, if you fill out a partner request form, then those uh, that gets routed to somebody who will say, you know, based on this volume, based on these parameters, here's the right fit of uh, a 3PL, which I think is is really great that we have somebody who, who can handhold through that process. Because I know for a lot of merchants, that's very intimidating. Uh, where do you start is always the question. And the best thing is we say, you can start with us, send us that request, and we'll pair you with a merchant that fills your needs, either based on your volume, shipping locations, where you're going to, uh, types of shipments that, that you wanna send in terms of shipment method, um, and, and product. We have uh, certain 3PL partners that specialize in certain products, uh, certainly maybe more than, than some others, and uh, have developed a, a core competency in, in, in certain industries. So I'd say go to ShipStation.com, go to our partners, fill out a partner request, and uh, we'll take care of you, I promise. So basically what you're saying is we are not a 3PL. We help integrate 3PLs. We help you get your products to the end customer and kind of you fill in that middleman role for shipping. And so what people can expect though, because you have all of these integrations and partnerships with these 3PLs is they can come to you and then they can say, okay, this is where I'm at in my business. This is what I need. And you can give them the recommendations of trusted providers that they can use to get their logistics figured out outside of Amazon. Um, that sounds like what you're communicating. Did I get that right? <laughs> yeah, again, uh, just like Andy, uh, your check's in the mail uh, in that uh, you captured us beautifully. Uh, we are not at the present time the, the fulfillment provider, um, but we can certainly make the right recommendations for your business uh, and tell you where to start. 
And one more question about the FBA side of things before I turn it back over to Andy. <laughs> He's supposed to be starting with these questions and I just have so many. Um, the, when you say you do FBA, I know that's going to confuse our listeners because to them, FBA is I send my product into a fulfillment center, an Amazon fulfillment center, Correct. and then Amazon fulfills it. So what do you guys do with FBA? So we have the technology integration where if you're a merchant and you need to delegate a certain amount of inventory, we have the functions from a technology perspective to be able to say, how do you segment that inventory uh, to go directly to Amazon um, and, and make use of FBA, um, especially if you already have an account uh, with FBA and pricing already in place, um, we can bring in those account credentials and, and, and get you started on that right away. So are you assisting in helping them get their inventory sent into a fulfillment center or are you assisting on, for example, maybe their Shopify website when they get an order on their website, they need to fulfill that through their inventory at Amazon. You're helping with that integration. Uh, it would be a bit more of the latter, the technology integration to be the conduit between the merchant and how are they fulfilled, if it's directly with Amazon or if it's through uh, FBA or SFP, uh, making sure that the merchant has options for how they uh, fulfill with Amazon, however that may be. Okay, that makes sense, got it. All right, Andy, back to you, now that I hijacked your question. <laughs> no, no, that was a great explanation and, and, and uh, you know, I'll just, uh, to, to add on that, I'll just give a real world example, right? So sometimes we'll have stock that comes in uh, from Amazon, right? An order from Amazon. And uh, sometimes we may not have that inventory uh, in our warehouse, um, but it's also, uh, you know, uh, an order that came directly to us. So what we can do then is just in ShipStation, so cool, I'll click, click, say, oh no, fulfill this by, uh, you know, FBA, um, and then click a few buttons and hit uh, send. And then it'll use uh, Amazon's um, shipping service. I forget what it's called now. Um, multi-channel? Multi-channel. Uh, yeah, multi so, yeah, multi-channel yeah. fulfillment. I can, I can click a few buttons and send multi-channel fulfillment, which is awesome. Same thing if they come to my Shopify or WooCommerce um, site, they order from me and then I can send it directly from Amazon using a few clicks, uh, exactly just what I explained. The other cool thing I love about ShipStation is it does smart filtering. So if I, you know, a product comes in and, you know, it, it, it has some kind of special need, like it has, needs a gift, a gift note or something like that. You can tag it. You can, uh, you know, send the customer a, an email if they forgot a gift message, even though it says there's supposed to be one. There's all these, these automations that, that I really use a lot and, and love a lot. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's uh, between all of, you, all of the, those explanations, people, if you don't know how ShipStation works, then shame on you. No, not really. Go watch some videos and stuff. They have some great ones. On that note, uh, Chris, what other, uh, what other channels right now should Amazon sellers be considering? I, I know you guys get a lot of data. Do you see any channels that are growing a lot? I assume it's probably Walmart, maybe a few others. Can you kind of tune us into uh, where, you know, if somebody's just selling on Amazon now, which a lot of our, our listeners just right. sell on Amazon, if you were selling on Amazon right now, and you're like, hey, I want to expand my, my, you know, my, my sales and, and my uh, exposure, what marketplaces would you consider? Sure. You know, I think um, really uh, the, the question the Amazon seller has to ask themselves or questions um, tends to be around the velocity of products and product sales and what's acceptable from the standpoint of um, how they want their product to be perceived and, and the frequency and, and velocity of sale. So, um, you know, to, to some of the earlier points, Walmart ends up being a wonderful uh, second or even primary channel. Uh, we all know the usual suspects, but some of the other marketplaces that people may not have considered right away, uh, for example, Rakuten and um, the fact that uh, they, or Newegg, um, for example, uh, believe it or not, those marketplaces, we, we tend to associate them with electronics, but in reality, uh, they actually do a substantial amount of sales in things like apparel. And so if, if you sell on, on Amazon and you may not be in the, the first top of mind category that that, cat that marketplace is known for, there may be attractive incentives for you as a seller because they want to increase those sales 
in those categories. Um, the last thing that I'll, I'll say, Andy, is uh, I think the marketplaces outside the U.S. Uh, that are trying to bring in uh, SKUs and products uh, are, are really great options for Amazon sellers. So I would be remiss if today I'm launching Mercado Libre in Latin America, and uh, we do have a program with Mercado Libre uh, for U.S. sellers to bring their products to sell on Mercado Libre, largest, Latin, largest marketplace in Latin America, fourth largest in the world uh, to do that. And, and I think the beauty there is that you're starting to expose your products for people who have an appetite for U.S. products um, to a whole new millions of buyers, if not billions of buyers around the globe. Yeah, I love that point. And, and uh, you know, that's another thing, you know, sellers don't realize if you have the time, the systems and the team in place, you're, I mean, really right now with e-commerce, you you're, you can have uh, exponential growth. You know, all you do is go into a new marketplace, right? Whether it's Amazon in a different country, you know, whether it's UK, Japan, um, uh, Germany, you know, some of these larger uh, secondary Amazon marketplaces. Um, and then, like you said, you know, Wish.com, Rakuten, which whoever the CEO is that of Rakuten needs to be fired because buy.com is a thousand times better. I always say that I, I have no idea why they, they tried to bring that into the U S market. It seems crazy to me. Um, but all these other channels, you know, if you come up with a way to manage and I mean that, I think that's why ShipStation is one of those tools that's so powerful is, you know, in an interface like that, where literally I can look at one dashboard and see orders from every, you know, no matter what marketplace I'm selling on, it's all in, in the same place. I, I can click and batch, you know, a hundred orders from 10 different marketplaces in, uh, you know, a few minutes, print the labels and send them out. It's so easy. Um, everybody probably listening to this thinks that, that you guys are like paying us for this episode. Um, that's absolutely not the case. We're not even doing affiliate links or anything. It's just one of my favorite essential tools. And uh, ShipStation is just uh, lucky enough to, to have, have me be a fanboy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, we, again, we, we appreciate the publicity. Um, one point that I, I will say that I was remiss in not mentioning is um, I oftentimes say that a B2C seller, so somebody that sells their products on Amazon, typically with the idea of buying a single transaction consumer, like most of us on Amazon, um, the difference between B2B selling and B2C, uh, the only difference is quantity. And um, I'm oversimplifying it, of course, but I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about um, a marketplace like Alibaba, where uh, we've had uh, some great success with programs that merchants who sell B2C uh, then say, you know what, I can sell larger quantities. Uh, why don't I? Uh, because of course, then the idea is you get efficiencies of scale, uh, you develop a trust relationship. So um, don't discount the idea that both on Amazon, you have Amazon business, um, and you also then have marketplaces like Alibaba. And just because you sell B2C does not mean that your product is not appropriate for B2B. More likely than not, the, the, the lines are blurring that the categories themselves um, are, are, are becoming pretty much one and the same as, as being appropriate for B2B uh, e-commerce or B2C. Yeah, I mean, really, the, oh, go ahead, Amy. Well, I think you make a really good point there in terms of, you know, Alibaba, right now with the political climate of everything going on and retailers also shopping on Alibaba for products, if they see a U.S. base um, or even, you know, we have a lot of listeners that are living in Australia and sell on Amazon.com in the U.S., but a retailer that sees somebody who speaks really great English, who's a good communicator, who already has their supply chain figured out. If I'm willing to deal with China and I have my contract all figured out and stuff like that, they're going to be more than happy to buy from me because they don't have to deal with all of that then. And mm -hmm. so people generally think of Alibaba as only kind of like, oh, this is how I find a factory in China, but it's quite the opportunity for sellers from all over to be able to list their stuff. Even on AliExpress, you have some mm -hmm. US-based sellers that are doing really, really well. And I think that, um, you know, all of us, I think it gets overwhelming for Amazon sellers because they had to figure out Amazon. And that was a big piece, right? Like figuring out how does Amazon work? How do I get my products in there? How do I get them 
fulfilled on time. And then all of a sudden, you know, Amazon dropped the ball during COVID and stopped delivering products on time. And people are like, what now? You know, do I need to remove my inventory? What do I do? You know, but I think so many people are stuck in this position where they're like, I just don't know how to move beyond Amazon. They feel like there's this big wall when really it's just about discovering one new marketplace at a time. And using something like ShipStation that could help you, you know, it's I, the biggest questions that I get when I recommend um, resources like ShipStation or Deliver or, you know, the biggest question I get is, well, wait, what about a 3PL? Well, wait, what about this? What about this? It's like, well, reach out to those resources. They're mm-hmm. going to help you find the right 3PL for you. They're going to help you get in touch with the right resources for you that's what they do with joy right (laughs) so i think you know this episode will hopefully chris give people kind of permission to reach out and go oh well maybe they can recommend a good 3pl for me oh well maybe i can sell in some other marketplaces and they can help me out with that so um i love that we're we're having this conversation it's really important yeah and I'd, i'd say as a finer fine fine point on it on one hand, I'm talking about B2B, which is a very large quantity. Um, but then you have the opposite side of your C2C marketplaces, like Facebook Marketplace, Google, um, who have um, either very low or have waived uh, seller fees altogether and listing fees. So um, I think those are ones to check out. Um, and, and finally, I'll say um, we, uh, we're not perfect. We don't have every, any and all marketplaces. Uh, I wish we did but uh, we don't, um, but we do listen to our, our users. Um, and so um, I always encourage merchants that if there is a marketplace um, that you're investigating uh, or want to sell on or have success on, um, you know, please let us know that. And uh, we always take our, our user feedback into account uh, when it comes to how we prioritize the next uh, partners we work with. Thanks for tuning in to part one of this episode. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.